can we just do like a run of that much? I can't remember exactly how it started, yeah, except that we were told that Brighton Festival wanted us to do a piece for the festival. From the very beginning. When Hoffish was Sorry. named as the festival director, he then commissioned several pieces and one of them was us. Can you remember when we heard that we had James Finnegan? Just who, before Christmas, that James, who used to be in the Hoffish Hector Company, and he was sort of nominated to, to work with us. Yeah. And be moving and go, okay, she started. And I did come with pretty much a like, blank slate. I had the title yeah. and I had a, quite a strong structure in terms of floor patterns, etc., with a bit of organised chaos in the middle. I love the way he tries to describe the movements <laughs> yes. and seeks out to, to be really precise about the feeling of it and, and the intention. It's lovely. I know I said don't like bounce, but I think because I said that, now this is the four has become very, very small. I prefer yeah, simplicity in general. I, really nice if, I, if people don't have to dance, do a, you know, a nice dance phrase, then then I don't want to make them. I find that sometimes less interesting. I prefer something more human, more simple. He's asked a great deal of us. He's asked us to learn a lot in a short space of time. And there is some hoppish stuff. It's very precise, some of it. It's <coughs> jointed and unconnected. I'm much better with big arm movements, but the, the little fiddly bit, that's your forte, yeah. Gus. <laughs> you're sort of like, that's your they're, sort of... They're jointed and connected, aren't well, they? Well, they are for you. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. In terms of the level of what the group could or could not do, uh, that took a bit of time for me to work out. Wherever you are is where you have to stay. So there's still a lot of last like adjustments happening after like the three and the four. You know, even if you're wrong, just accept that that's your position for that. Yeah. We're so much better at this. We would have been absolutely terrified in the beginning, and now we think, yes, we've got some ability, we can do it. And we're listening better as well, aren't we? We're standing and listening and waiting for those changes, which probably we might not have done at the beginning. I feel as if I've moved on. I would probably have been tapping my foot, thinking, oh God, when, when's something going to happen? It took a lot from the group in terms of their presence. It's, I think it has a lot to do with the age, the life experience. Some people just have to, just there, just have to stand still, and it's interesting. What is coming out more and more as we grow together as a group is what we can bring to dance as older people, and the quality that that gives us that maybe younger dancers wouldn't have. Everyone in the group does have their very special thing that comes with, not with being a dancer, it comes with, I don't know living a bit. My friends think it's weird, you know, at the age of 71, doing this stuff. Then they come and see it and they realise, yeah, it's actually for real. I prefer to think of myself as somebody who's getting into dancing and trying it and just happens to be 60, as opposed to, you know, we're all 60-year-olds, isn't this amazing, they're trying dancing. There's a, a real thing that's happening here, because initially it's like, well, you know, like, like just the friends saying, oh, you know, we're doing this thing in this that railway station, and they said, oh, is that in the fringe? I said, no, no, it's in the proper festival. You know, it's yeah, like, really we're, proud. We're like, you know, we're like real. You know? <laughs> we did start off as a slightly random group of individuals. We developed as a team, mm -hmm. and we're producing work that's much more entertaining mm -hmm. yes. and moving. Yeah. What's the plan for today? Today, uh, have to chat to the station. It's a bit daunting thinking about the station. And now I've seen the space and the parameters that, you know, that we're working within, I, I feel a lot better. I was really worried about uh, how we were going to deal with people being in the way. I'm still slightly worried, but less <laughs> nervous than I was. Like, let's call it the, the end of Tumbleweed, where you've gone back to take Gus, right, and then you spread back side. Yep. Perhaps it is ambiguous, but I, I don't know. Yeah, it has a sense of order, a sense of something that I like. Suddenly, I think we can start to see what we're doing, and, it, and it's all suddenly coming together. Do you and think sort that of happened in the station? In that feeling of performing with people moving around you instead of people sitting down and watching you. 
ideally, it will be the same timing as you did in the studio, yeah. where okay. you've got Chris a bit by himself, Ian comes in. It added another dimension for me, how he's using the dance to carve out a different sort of space within a space that's normally used in another way. I kind of like the idea of dance as, as drama, doing something dramatic, you know, like disrupting people's lives, so they're coming through the station and finding something they don't expect. Sorry we're stuff. late. <laughs> Trying. And I like it when it happens to me. Um, We had two performances this morning. One went better than the other. <laughs> and the other went really well. I got such good feedback from the audience. I'd never seen three scored before and um, it was really great to see them. They're wonderful. They have so much integrity to their, to their movement and they knew exactly what they were doing as well. And yeah. just a bit of calm in the middle of this yeah. crazy place. it was about how we respond to this particular environment because a, a, a train station concourse is always about passing through really quickly and, and rushing and just to like have some presence in this space felt quite beautiful. What was it supposed to be? Well, I, don't know. I think it's got different moods in it. Mm. You know, moments of, because at one point quite confident about the outside world and then suddenly... Well that's realized. what I saw. I saw the confidence and then the sort of like withdrawing a bit from it and then coming back to it. I just saw it as a passage, a right of passage through time. I thought it was wonderful. One of the nice things about dance is it doesn't necessarily have to have a meaning. Someone was saying they thought it was something to do with the First World War because of um, the movements of people in and out and the saluting and various things like that. I think people make a story for themselves. I thought serene. I like the slowness of the movements. I thought that was the sort of elegant movements, I thought. Just seemed to be very slowed down and very fluid and calm. What's it like to be a prima donna? Oh God, if only. <laughs> no, absolutely no. not. I was so petrified at the idea of doing a duet. I remember when he first asked us to do it, I remember sort of this internal squeak. The group is very supportive. We saw it today, really, when, when things went a bit awry and everybody pulled together and did what they were supposed to do when there was a problem. My partner died after a, a long illness. I'd been a carer. It's been very supportive. It's very therapeutic. The exercise, the company, it's really very, very helpful altogether. immensely pleased because it's come as a relatively short time after we started in our third year and proud to have got this far as non-dancers to be able to do this yes, it's, it's been hard work but it's yeah it's fantastic fantastic i've really enjoyed working with the group they've they've challenged me definitely but i think i've challenged them 
hopefully in mostly good ways. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So many strong personalities and nice personalities, yeah. It's been really nice.